this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger, here with my new Empowered Moments video for the week of Monday, February 13th through Sunday, February 19th, 2023. For this week's weekly reading, we will be using the Tarot of Dreams by Ciro Marchetti for the main message for everyone. And our special message card this week, depending on our stone of choice, will be coming from the Spell Casting Oracle deck. And this is by Flavia Kate Peters and Barbara Meikle John Free. So just a reminder that we are just over mid-month for this month of February. So if you haven't already watched my monthly Empowered Moments video for the month of February, complete with the numerology vibration, the astrological transits of significance, as well as messages from our angels and guides, and a special message card, depending on your stone of choice for that, please go onto my YouTube channel and watch that. So before we get into looking at our stones of choice, let's go ahead and do an empowered moment. So if you can close your eyes, relax your body, clear your mind, Put your feet flat on the floor if you can, with your legs uncrossed, sitting with your spine straight, but yet your body's nice and relaxed. And start out by visualizing golden white light all around you. Golden white light of unconditional love, compassion, peace and healing, protection and guidance. And feel that golden white light, sense it, see it, or just know that it's there. And let's take a deep breath, breathing in that golden white light into every cell of our bodies. And as you exhale, letting go of all that your body, mind, and soul no longer needs. And silently in your mind, calling in your angels, guides, master guides, and teachers of the highest vibration of light. We call in the archangels, the ascended masters, and our ancestors of the light. We ask that they provide us with guidance and healing as we move forward in our journey, the next step on our destiny path. And this week, we're going to have the sun transitioning into Pisces, the last sign of the zodiac. And we'll also have a new moon in Pisces. And as we enter that Pisces energy, that 12th and last sign of the zodiac, it means we're going into a cycle of completion on some level whatever level that might be or whatever areas of your life that might entail depends on your astrological chart. But Pisces rules the higher spiritual realms. It rules the dissolution of boundaries between time and space. It rules magic and miracles, your psychic abilities, healing and as we move into a new moon it's a time of new beginnings a time of initiation of an energy and that energy is Pisces for now so we're initiating a new cycle regarding the clearing and healing of energies and situations relationships, karmic patterns, belief systems. So focus on those areas of your life that you would like healing to take place in. and ask for guidance as you move into this Piscean energy. Ask for guidance to surrender. Surrender and let go. 
having faith and trust in the divine plan. Faith and trust that everything is unfolding exactly as it needs to and in the timing that is meant for you. Visualize what it is that you want to heal and visualize what it is that you want to create for soon we'll be going into within another month a new moon in Aries, a true new beginning. And let's take one last deep healing, cleansing, balancing breath and breathe in that intention, the intention for healing. And as you exhale and in your own time, you can open your eyes and return to this time and this place. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our stones of choice for this week. So these are special intention pendants and the first one we have is an amethyst cluster pendant. So this is um, wrapped in silver wire as you can see and it's been Reiki charged and infused with the vibration of the number nine essence of the humanitarian and creative and spiritual energy and the master number 11 number of the light worker and the visionary qualities of the sign of Pisces for unconditional love compassion and spiritual connection to one's angels and guides the balancing of the crown chakra to open one up to higher wisdom and guidance, and Archangel Raziel's energy, the Archangel of alchemy and divine magic. Okay. And I know this is a this is a bigger pendant, but you can see here that it fits nicely here if you so desire. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next pendant of choice. This one is blue green kyanite so we often think of kyanite as that kind of sky blue throat chakra blue but there are other colors of kyanite there's black kyanite and there's green kyanite this one kind of is a cross between the blue and the green and this one's wrapped in silver wire and reiki charged with the vibration of master number 22 number of power on all planes as well as the manifestation of great things the qualities of neptune and pluto are reiki infused into this combining increased intuitive and healing powers with transformation and transmuting negative lower vibrational energies the energy is also of the sign of aquarius sign of higher perception and truths and the guidance and assistance of Archangel Michael to clear away lower energies and remove blocks. Archangel Metatron to access higher spiritual wisdom and connect to your Akashic records. And Archangel Raziel to expand your psychic senses and tune into divine magic. Okay, beautiful. Okay. And then the last stone of choice is, let's see if I can get a good handle on it there so you can see it. This is a Lemurian seed, Lemurian seed record keeper quartz wrapped in silver. And it's been Reiki charged with the vibration of master number 11, the light worker energy. The uh, Aquarius energies or the Aquarius qualities of freedom and independence. This one has infused into it the element of air, which is about communication and ideas and Archangel Raziel's energies for divine magic, psychic abilities or increased psychic abilities, alchemy and divine wisdom and knowledge. Okay, this one happens to be a masculine one. If you're going onto my website to look at the pendants, there is a feminine Lemurian seed which has a flat bottom. So if you're looking for this one, make sure you're looking for the one that has the point there. So again, whoops, and this is what it would look like. Let's go ahead and show you those one more time. We got the amethyst cluster. We've got the blue-green kyanite. And we've got 
the masculine Lemurian seed record keeper quartz crystal. All right, I'm gonna set those over here. And then we're gonna talk about the astrological energies for the week. So nothing much happening on Monday and Tuesday. When we get to Wednesday the 15th, we have lovely, beautiful Venus, ruler of the divine feminine archetype, uh, and also the ruler of relationships and personal resources. She's currently in Pisces, and she's connecting with fantasy-driven Neptune, right? Neptune rules the spiritual realm, and Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces, and it's this dreamy, romantic, artistic, creative, and spiritual energy. So you can kind of guess what that might be about with Venus, ruler of relationships. We might be wearing rose-colored glasses about our relationships, but we can also be immersed in that unconditional love and compassion and that just really feel good energy within relationships. When it comes to money and finances, um, she's not quite as, what do I wanna say? In her logical mind, right? Venus connecting with Neptune, it can be like the money, the finances, it's like uh, being kind of confused about what's going on with it, or you could actually spend more than you think and all of a sudden it's like the the money runs through your hands or your fingers like water it, they're both in water signs so it has that kind of elusive lack of boundaries sort of feel but on the other side of things when it comes to money and finances you could actually work on creative or artistic projects that are focused on a way to produce some income. So it's good for that creative, artistic, spiritual sort of energy. On Thursday the 16th, which is just the next day, a very different energy. Now we've got the sun, which rules our sense of self, self-identity, and creative self-expression, but it's in logical air sign Aquarius, and it's connecting to Saturn, which can bring up karmic lessons. Saturn's a great manifester, so this can manifest something, something of a humanitarian nature because they're both in Aquarius. But Saturn sometimes can bring limitations and restrictions, and again, those lessons. He's the great teacher of karmic lessons. So this would be a non-flexible energy where Venus and Pisces, they're both, or Venus and Neptune are both in Pisces, which is very mutable and changeable and go with the flow and just kind of in that feel good sort of energy. Now we've got the sun and Saturn the next day and fixed, stubborn, Aquarius. So it doesn't want to budge, it doesn't want to bend. But again, this can be good for take charge leadership sorts of uh, interactions or situations. It can be good for collaboration and really um, coming to some conclusions with those co collaborations or bringing something or at least the beginning of bringing something into manifestation with those collaborations. This can be this can be an authoritative energy, which can be either good or challenging, right? We can actually own our own authority and shine our light in a very objective but yet confident way. And on the other side of the coin, we might have some authority issues maybe with some other people um, to where we're feeling limited or held back within our sense of freedom as they're both in independent, uh, freedom-oriented Aquarius. So, you know, again, it's going to depend on your chart and how you utilize those energies. On Friday the 17th, we have Mercury, the planet that rules the mental realm, our thoughts, our ideas, our communications. It's in Aquarius as well, very intellectual, sparking new ideas, um, aha moments, epiphanies, new insights. So Mercury in Aquarius is in a sextile to Jupiter on Friday. And Jupiter is the planet of seeing the big picture, looking at the big picture, expanding into blessings. Um, it's about abundance and prosperity. And the sextile is an opportunity here. And that means that we have to take advantage of, first of all, we have to recognize that an opportunity might be presenting itself. And then we have to take steps or take action on that opportunity to produce something. But I think those two, they're very positive in their own right. And I think that if you look for that opportunity with that new idea, that new vision, um, collaboration, communications, 
um, expanding your mind, learning something new or teaching something new to someone else, this can be a very positive aspect that brings in not just material abundance and prosperity, but all sorts of other types of blessings as well, especially even confidence. That's a blessing, right? We have more confidence. We have more courage. We have more of a sense of, of ourselves. And so it can, it can do that as well. On Saturday the 18th, we have the sun moving out of Aquarius and into the sign of Pisces. So we're starting to transition into that Piscean energy. Of course, Venus already is in Pisces. Now we've got the sun moving into Pisces on Saturday. And on Sunday, we're leading up to a new moon in Pisces. But before we get to that new moon, we have Venus in Pisces again, but now she's in a sextile to Pluto. And Pluto is about transformation and change and death and rebirth sorts of energies. So this can bring some sort of transformation in relationship matters or transformation in financial matters transformation of our own femininity within ourselves, our own sense of self-worth and, and how we feel about ourselves. So again, look for that opportunity to bring transformation into your life. Then the new moon is at one degree of Pisces on Sunday. And so again, new moons, new beginnings, but Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac that rules the spiritual realm and it rules past lives and it rules energies that are unseen. But this is also very creative and artistic and, and imaginative with that energy, right? So really use your visualization in meditation to create in your mind at least what it is that you want to create in your life, right? That's This is gonna be a good new moon to kind of imagine and create in your mind what you wanna create in your life. And then also on Sunday, Venus is moving out of Pisces. Yep, she was connecting with Pluto before the new moon on Sunday, but after the new moon, she's moving out of Pisces and into the sign of Aries, the first sign of the Zodiac, where she's going to be until March 16th. So Venus, the divine feminine energy within us, Venus that rules all sorts of types of relationships, Venus that rules personal resources like money and finances and time and, and support from other people, and Venus which rules our sense of self-worth and how we value ourselves. Now she's in confident, or she's going to be, moving into confident, courageous, independent, take charge, leadership oriented Aries. So let's just say within relationship partnership matters and within financial or money matters, she's gonna have more of a take charge spirit. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides for the week. Okay, the first card that came out is the King of Cups. Well, that really has that kind of emotional, watery, sensitive, creative, even romantic sort of feeling to it. And this definitely to me relates to the Venus and Neptune connection in Pisces. The king is a take charge energy. He's a leader. He's masterful, right? He is, he knows what he wants to do. He knows what he has to do. But yet again, this is the sign of cups. So this is all about emotions and emotional reactions and relationships and partnerships, our own sense of emotional well-being. So he's taking charge of how he feels emotionally, maybe redirecting the energy because he wants to feel good. The King of Cups could indicate a person in our lives, could be you know, whether male or female, this is a masculine card, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily just a man to a woman. This could be also relationships the other way where it's a woman to a man, but she has more of a um, kind of a take charge leadership oriented in a way attitude, but yet with uh, a love and compassion and nurturing and forgiveness and emotion and empathy. <clears throat> so and this could indicate somebody in your life that you're in a relationship with, or it could be somebody new that you meet. And it doesn't even necessarily mean it's romantic. This could be a new friend, this could be a new business partner, but it's telling you that this person is 
uh, connected to their own emotional nature. They're, they're empathic, they're psychic, they're intuitive, they're gentle, they're loving, they're compassionate. So that's what this person is. And I just noticed here at the top, isn't it interesting that we've got the sign, the glyph for Aquarius right here. And then we've got the glyph for Pisces. So this person embodies both that masculine air sign Aquarius energy, where the sun is in the earlier part of the week. And then isn't it interesting that the sun will move into Pisces later in the week, but this person also embodies that spiritual, loving, compassionate energy as well. Okay, very interesting. Okay, see if there's anything else here that stands out. Hmm. I feel like, you know, we've got a couple of mermaids down here that are kind of back to back. So it almost feels again like there's something, something in regards to relationship here. This might be us embodying the King of Cups energy, but I feel like there's something playing out in some sort of relationship. And again, uh, something to where our emotions are involved. Okay, let's look at the next card. The next card is the Ace of Coins, which is like the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Earth. Aces are about new beginnings. And we do have a new moon, which is about new beginnings this week. But interestingly enough, again, that new moon is in water sign Pisces. And the coins or the pentacles is more earthly and grounded. Um, it's about material things like money or career or job, maybe even home and family. But again, there's some sort of new beginning here, some sort of take charge energy. And look at that, that image, right, of this masculine man. And he's got, you know, some pretty heavy duty muscles there going on. So there's a strong energy there. This is strong and confident and take charge. He's lifting up this disc, this coin into the air. So it definitely could have something to do with, uh, again, job, career, money, finances. This to me really more relates to the sun connecting to Saturn, that strong authoritative Saturn energy and that Aquarius energy, which is very much about again new ideas and collaboration and perceptions and communication and new thoughts and ideas so i feel like there's something new in the works where we have to really uh, take charge take charge and initiate aces are about initiation so let's initiate some sort of action um, because the coins want something to be manifested right? Action usually to me would be more of the fire element or the wands, but we're initiating something tangible here to create and manifest something with this ace of coins. And typically this is a very positive card. So listen to whatever inspirations, logical or higher wisdom and knowledge from the universe inspirations kind of are channeled through because this is a very positive indication of something kind of new being born, so to speak. And then the last card, okay, this one is the Eight of Cups. And this particular card with the Eight of Cups has the glyph for Saturn and Pisces. So Saturn, again, is that authority energy, but also relates to karmic lessons from the past. And in Pisces, isn't it interesting? We're going into that new moon in Pisces. Well, the sun moves into Pisces on Saturday. The new moon is on Sunday. So that means previous to the weekend, we're kind of in that dark of the moon phase, really the day before, but let's go up to two days before. We're in the dark of the moon. And that is a time of kind of clearing and being silent and being reflective and receptive. And even with us going into a new moon, it's in Pisces. And this card is ruled by Saturn and Pisces. So it has the feeling of clearing out some old karma. And the Eight of Cups typically is about walking away from something, walking away from the past, walking away from something um, that you were emotionally connected to that just didn't work out the way that you intended it to. The number eight numerologically can deal with um, karmic lessons as well, but it does deal with our sense of power or empowerment. 
In other words, we might have been feeling disempowered by some sort of either relationship or situation that we're emotionally attached to. And it's time to kind of clear something out energetically and take our power back so that we can move forward. Now, it's interesting that in most of the Eight of Cups that you might see in traditional tarot decks, you actually see a person turning their back on the cups and walking away from. This person, if you can see, is actually walking sort of up this staircase. And there's a full moon back here too, by the way. So we're in a new moon cycle. Let's give something two weeks here with this. Within two weeks, we'll be at the next full moon. So I wanna say within two weeks, you wanna clear out something. Now, whether it's something tangible, it doesn't have to be a tangible situation or a tangible relationship. This might be clearing out old patterns, old belief systems. Pisces does rule that untangible or intangible sort of energy. Um, so again, it could be just stuff within yourself, energy within yourself that you're clearing out. But again, going back to this staircase, this person isn't just walking away. He's walking up or she's walking up. So I feel like we're walking up and ascending to another energy level. We're walking up this spiritual staircase and ascending to the next level of who we are on our soul journey. So to me, it has this very spiritual feel of um, evolution. It's like we're, you know, we're evolving. We're learning something here. We don't want to be disempowered anymore. We're going to take our power back with whatever it is that this, you know, is about for you. And we're going to ascend to the next level of our soul's purpose, soul's journey, or soul learning with this card. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at your special message, depending on your soul, stone of choice. Let's give this a little shuffle. I haven't used the, these cards for a little while. So the first stone of choice was the amethyst cluster. Special message for amethyst cluster people. Okay, this one caught my attention when I opened my eyes, of course. Oh, you guys, passion. Okay. So there's only one person in this card, but it almost looks like there's a background image of someone else. So this can be something about passion in relationships or maybe feeling a lack of passion, but I feel like it's just more about, do you feel passionate about your life? Do you feel passionate about your soul's journey right now and where you're at? I feel like maybe there has been maybe a lack of energy and passion. Maybe you need to rekindle that and find that again. How can you activate your passion? And that would be something that with this new moon in Pisces that you can visualize or contemplate or meditate on. How can I activate this passion in my life? And, you know, one good thing is to embody this element of fire, right? There's a lot of fire in this card. So let's embody and activate fire. Maybe you want to have a little campfire and do a little ceremony. Maybe you want to light a candle um, on your altar and activate the passion. Um, maybe we want to, um, what do I want to say, wear some fiery colors, right? Because that sort of activates our mood and activates our our physical energy, right? So we're wearing gold and yellow and we're wearing orange and we're wearing red, all those kind of passionate sort of colors. Um, and also focus on those lower three chakras, right? We could definitely want to balance all of our chakras, but let's spend a little bit more time activating that solar plexus chakra, our center of personal power and confidence and courage. And and balancing and activating that sacral chakra, which is that orange chakra below the, the navel, which is the center for passion and creative self-expression. And then that root chakra, which color is red, let's activate that one. That's for physical vitality, that's for a sense of security, both financially and in life. It's the chakra where we can feel grounded and utilize our manifestation gifts. So activate your passion this week somehow in some way okay 
All right, let's take a look at the special message for those that chose the blue green kyanite. Blue green kyanite, special message. Okay, this one's calling my attention. Oh, answers. Okay. Well, you're going to receive some answers, but I feel like you got to ask, right? Got to ask your angels and guides or your higher self for answers. And maybe you're looking for answers from somebody else. Maybe you need to have a communication with a relationship, a person, you know, to receive some answers of what's going on, what happened, why did this happen, what, why did this unfold the way it did, right? Um, but again, this could be receiving some spiritual answers and guidance as well. So I, I want to say that both through like prayer and meditation and asking for answers and see what kind of um, pops in. Maybe you want to do some automatic writing. Maybe you want to get an intuitive or psychic reading and, you know, have somebody kind of help you to, to bring forth some, uh, some answers, some ideas of what's, you know, what the next step is on your path. Ask your higher soul self. Open up your crown chakra and allow kind of this download um, to kind of come forth and give you that guidance and that assistance. Let's see what else kind of pops in here. Um, I'm feeling like um, astrology and even numerology, astrology and numerology, like knowing what transits are going on in your chart, um, knowing what personal year number and what personal month number you're in, so that that can provide you with some answers and guidance as well, okay? All right, and then let's look for a special message for the Lemurian Seed Record Keeper Quartz people. All right, let's give this a shuffle. Lemurian Seed, special message. This one popped right up. Okay, reconciliation. Well, look at that. Now... There's another full moon here. So again, I want you to give it a couple of weeks as we near the full moon. But maybe you're waiting to hear from somebody. Maybe there needs to be, again, some communication or you're waiting for an answer or um, it could be somebody you haven't heard from in a really long time. Uh, someone from the past. Again, it could be friend, could be romantic could be business associated, family associated. There's There might be some sort of reconciliation or at least them extending the olive branch or reaching out. This can al also be um, past life related. And as we move into Pisces season, Pisces rules past lives and the other realms and the other lifetimes that we've lived, all the different, you know, um, Kind of directions of time and space so to speak so there might be a reconciliation with a soul that we don't even know in this lifetime but we've known before in a previous lifetime and i feel like there's you know an opportunity here for healing the way this is looking i'm not gonna promise anything because we all have free will as souls and we both you know make uh, within relationship we make different different decisions and and how we proceed with communication and um, if we've, you know, learned certain, uh, what do I want to say, tests, ideas, and challenges on an individual level as far as how we interact with one another or support one another. But this, is, this has got a, a good promising feel to it, to where let's reconnect. Oh, and I'm feeling too, and I'm getting that this could be a re reconciliation of somebody that's passed. This could be either a loved one or a pet that's passed away and maybe they come to you in a dream or maybe even in waking reality where there's this reconciliation reconnection you know higher sort of energy here that's going on with you and that loved one that's passed so could this could be a lot of things here an actual relationship something past life something about a soul that's transitioned on the other side but again look for perhaps within the next two weeks from the new moon at the end of this week, um, and then two weeks from there, which would bring us to the full moon. I feel like the reconciliation has to do with some, again, cleaning up and healing of some old energies and old dynamics. Maybe finally bringing something to completion um, 
it doesn't mean it has to be an ending, but it feels like at least a pattern of some sort, if nothing else, needs to be kind of reconciled and, and completed on some level. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your love, your comments, your support, for following me on Facebook and Instagram, for checking out my services on my website as well as my special intention pendants. I send you all lots of love and light and new moon blessings until we meet again next week. Namaste, everyone.